Hey guys, in the last lesson in our SAS mini-series, we're going to be taking a look at Compass. So you've probably heard the word Compass thrown around on Twitter or Facebook if you're not familiar with it. And you've probably heard it connected to SAS, and you should, they are connected. So what is Compass? It's a CSS framework, but is that connected to uh, the 960 framework and the Blueprint framework? Well, you know what? We call those frameworks, but they're really not. It's a collection of, those are a collection of classes that help you. They help out with layout and maybe a couple other things. But Compass is an actual CSS framework. So what that allows for is things like, it has a plethora of mixins that you can use. For example, think of box shadow. Every time you want to use a box shadow, you need to do all of those vendor specific prefixes like Mozilla box shadow, WebKit box shadow, box shadow. And then think of the other properties where Microsoft has a filter. Opera has a filter. If you want to go back as far as KHTML, you could do that too. So you end up with like six prefixes for something as simple as a transition or a box shadow or a border radius. And that's a waste of time. So what Compass does is it turns all of this into a function call because it's all stored in a mixin, which we learned in one of the first two lessons. And then you can take Compass even further to do things like uh, browser checking. So rather than having to learn all these different IE hacks like the star hack or the underscore hack, you can just do it a, a single function call and that'll uh, render has layout or whatever you need it to do. And then you can even extend it further with third-party extensions like Lemonade, which is a sprite generator that's incredible. So these are connected. Compass and SAS, they're built together and you're gonna use them together most of the time. And that's why it's the subject of our last lesson. So first step, of course, is we need to download it. And you're gonna download it as a gem. So if you've already installed Ruby gems, you're all set to go, and you just need to run this command or possibly sudo gem install if you wanna run, run it as the super user. So let's do this. Let's open up the terminal and get started. So I'm gonna run sudo gem install compass. Now it's gonna ask me for my password, and that'll take just a few seconds or so to install all of the necessary documentation. Okay, and that's finished, so let's look at the next steps. It's very simple, very similar to SAS, actually. So if you wanna make sure it's installed, you can run Compass version, but right here is what we need. We create a project, and what that will do is it'll create a new directory, and it's going to have two folders, one for your style sheets and one for your source. So again, remember, you edit the s.scss files and then compass and sass that will automatically create the raw css files for you and those are the files that you link to within the head of your documents and then you call like with sass compass watch my project all right so let's do this uh, let's go to my desktop and we're going to do this so compass create and we'll just call it testing for now so what that's going to do is it's going to create a bunch of files for us and if i close this out you'll see this new testing directory created. It has a configuration.ruby file. If you're not working with Ruby or Rails, that's okay, don't worry about that. It's just for your configuration options. You could still use this with even a static site, that's okay, because that's only for development time. And then we have your source and your style sheets files. Okay, so the next step is, if we come back to Chrome, you can see that we've created that directory, but now we need to tell Compass to watch it keep an eye on it, look for changes, just as with SAS. So we'll do that right now. And we're gonna do compass watch testing. And now you can see right here, compass is watching for changes. And that's it, we're done in the terminal. Now you can get started uh, with your project. So I'm gonna create a new tab and let's go ahead and uh, open that up. So I'm gonna use Mac Vim once again to open that up and let's play around with it. So we don't have any uh, HTML files or PHP or anything because that's not what Compass is for. Compass is a CSS framework. So I'm going to open up the source files and we'll take a look at screen.scss. So you can see here, welcome to this Compass. In this file, you should write your main styles. But remember, when you import it, you're going to reference the CSS file, not the SCSS. All this does is it's a page that gives you the ability to use your variables, to import different areas of the Compass framework. But then ultimately, when the file is served, it's just simple CSS. So you can see here, they're beginning by importing Compass slash reset. And what that will do is it's going to import a reset file. So let's take a look at that. We can go into our style sheets directory. And if I open up screen, you can see that that goes ahead and imports that file for you. So I'll go back to my SCSS file and let's take a look at some of the things we can do. So everything that we've learned in the previous two lessons, variables, mixins, extending, you can do all of that in here. 
but we can take advantage of the compass framework now as well. So let's take a look at this. So we can go into the course section and you can see all the different things we can work with. A lot of these are just helpful mix-ins. So for example, let's do border radius. That's an easy one. So when you reference this, this mix-in border radius, what that's going to do is it's going to run this mix-in. So it's just a collection of mix-ins almost. And you can see here that you can pass these values to it. And what that's going to do is it's going to include uh, these extra mixins, and if you come down here to the bottom, and then ultimately what you end up with is all of those vendor specific prefixes for old Firefox, for Microsoft, Opera, new Mozilla, WebKit, and the official form, which is what Chrome and latest versions of Safari are using, I think as well as IE9. All right, so let's learn how to use this. If you ever need an example within here, just click on the example, and this will show you how it's going to look ultimately. So what you need to do though, is you need to import the necessary files. So for example, if we come back, if all we wanted was to work with border radius, we would want to import compass CSS3 border radius. And you would do it like so, import compass CSS3 border radius. But in this case, in most projects, you're gonna be using a lot of the features and a lot of the helpers within the CSS3 namespace. So we can keep it just like that and that'll give us access to all of these and then you never have to worry about it again. And now let's play around with it. So we'll create an imaginary element and we'll call it box. And to include it, let's go back, take a look at an example. And this is the mixin. So remember, we learned how to use mixins by doing include. Now, if you're using the old form of SAS, which we haven't gone over, because it seems like they're kind of pushing for people to use the more uh, CSS friendly SCSS version. But if you're using the old version of SAS, you're gonna see this a lot, plus experimental. So with a .sass file, you would do something like border radius. But that's not going to work because we have a SCSS extension. So instead we do include border radius. And let's take a look at the parameters. By default, you can just pass one right here, radius. But as we know with border radius, you can also pass a vertical radius as well, but that is optional. So we'll pass it in here and we'll say five pixels. So this step, Let's go into what that compiled. And if we go back to terminal, what you'll see here is changes detected and it goes ahead and updates that immediately when you save. So at this point, I will go ahead and load this file. It includes our reset file. But if we come down to the bottom, you'll see right here, it has a comment and that tells us what line is responsible for creating the following markup. So if we come back, we can see line nine, that's where it's referenced. And then it outputs all of that so that you never have to do it. All you ever have to worry about is just this simple version of border radius. So let's say also box your floating elements within it and you wanna clear it. Well, there's a couple ways, you know, the overflow hidden trick, but there are times when this isn't going to work when, for example, you need elements to overflow that box so that maybe you can have, um, you know, you could have some little ribbon that goes over the edge of the box and, and corny stuff like that. So in those cases, you can use something called the pie clear fix. And that's the old version where you would do box after, and then you would clear the content. And they call it the old version, but it's really perfectly applicable now. And I use it many times actually. So of course, Compass is going to have a utility for that. So if we come back to the top, you can see that it's separated into these different divisions. So we have helpers, layout, reset. We want a utility and we need the clear fix utility. And you can see again, it's stored within the utilities namespace, general clear fix, or you can just import this if you plan on using many of these. And we'll do that again. So with that imported, we can again use any of these here. So we take a look at clear fix we can view the source, and that's all that's really being done here. So you don't even have to use these if you don't want, but it's helpful. So what it does is it applies to overflow hidden, and it includes has layout, and that's a browser checker. So it'll determine if it's IE, if it is, it'll do something that'll trigger layout like doing zoom one. But what we want in this case is the pie clear fix, and that's the more traditional version of using after to paste this in. So to reference that once again, we'll do it right here. We'll change that and we're gonna call include pi clear fix. And let's see if it takes any parameters. No, it does not. So we'll keep it just like that. Open it back up again. And now take a look at it. We've included zoom one and it's using the star hack because it knows that only needs to be applied in Internet Explorer seven and below. And the star hack is a way to target 
only IE7 and IE6 and IE5, which you should not be supporting. Maybe not even IE6. Uh, by the way, if you want to target IE6, you would do the underscore. IE7 would be star. And then if you want to do like IE8 and below, there's this cool one where it's like backslash 9 at the end. Kind of cool. Anyways, and then you can also see that it also applies this after. So this is what a, a real CSS framework is. It's a collection of tons of mixins and helpers that can allow you to produce your websites much faster. It even has things like support for frameworks. So for example, it has built-in support for the Blueprint framework. But let's say you prefer 960. All right, then all you would have to do is search for something like 960 Compass uh, Gym. Let's search for that. All right, let's take a look at this one. Yeah, and there you go, and that would be fine. So you would do it just like normal, install this, but then when you create your directory, you call compass create, just like we did before, uh, but we're gonna require this 960 gem in order to do it, and then we give it the name, we called ours testing, and then we do dash dash using 960, and that'll create the directory structure and the file structure to use 960 framework. But even cooler, Rather than relying on using non-semantic classes like grid 5 and grid 10, you can make it much more semantic by creating your layouts directly within the CSS file. So you could say container, and then within the CSS file, you specify your grids. Very cool. So if you need that, that'll be included in the show notes. All right, let's take a look at a couple more. Let's go back to the core in CSS3, and let's come down, and let's say we want to apply a box shadow. Okay, we can do that. So we can say here, and we'll say some other element. And if we want to use it, once again, we could import it directly, but because we're already importing the CSS3 namespace, we're good there. And then here are the configuration options, and these can be set just like variables, but they will override the default colors, and we'll go over that shortly. So here's the mixin. Once again, uh, you can see with SAS, we have the ability to do like if-then statements. So if and set, if an inset was applied, then they need to do it like so. So here, here are our parameters. And notice that all of them are surrounded by brackets, and that's because all of these are optional, meaning there are defaults already set. So for example, if we did include box shadow, and we just kept it like that. Let's see what happens when I refresh this. Notice how it uses these default values for us, and it sets the default value of 333. All right, well, where that's, where's that coming from? and then come back to configurable variables and check out the default variable, I'm sorry, the default value is this color. So if you wanna overwrite that, we can do like so. And I'm gonna show you before the end of this lesson a cleaner way to do all of this. So at the very top, we'll set default color to 666 instead. Save that, go to the bottom, and now notice how we've overwritten the default value. Now it's 666. But let's say we have our defaults, but this is something special, and we want to do custom values. Then it's just like a normal box shadow. You specify the color, the H offset, the Y offset, the blur, the spread, and the inset. So let's do this. Uh, box shadow is going to be red, two pixels to the right, five, five pixels down, ten pixels worth of blur, zero spread, and that'll be fine. And if the spread is zero, you can just leave that off because it'll be that way by default. Save it come back and now you can see that it's picking up those values. Look at all this power that Compass affords you and we haven't even scraped the surface of all the cool things you can do with it. It also has support for sprites. One of my coworkers at Envato, Stu, turned me onto this and it's called Lemonade. So let's search for Lemonade Compass Sprite. That should be enough. There it is. Now what this does is it'll create your sprites for you. It's really cool. We're not going to go over it in this lesson, but if you want, we can cover it in a quick tip. And basically the way it works is you call sprite image and you provide a path. You see that right there, right there. And then ultimately that will go ahead and create your sprite for you. And you can see right there, you never even have to go to Photoshop to do that. And this is available through with SAS and using Compass. Lots of really cool stuff and extensions are available for it. Okay, so you're free to go through the rest yourself. There's tons of options, but they're really easy to use. The last thing we wanna go over is just a quick best practice. So if we come back to our main file, notice we're importing files. We have our configurable variables. You could even get rid of this. 
but it's still considered a best practice to have a base.scss file. And this file will be responsible for importing any necessary namespaces, setting your configuration options and stuff like that. And then it cr makes your main files much cleaner and they can import them. So let's do that right now. So within my source, I'm gonna create a new one and it's gonna be called base.scss. And we're gonna come back and we're gonna remove those and paste, and paste them in like so. So then at this point, this is much cleaner and all I have to do is one time call import base. And notice I don't have to pass in SCSS, though I can do so if I want, but by default, I don't need to do that. So what that means is this file then has access to everything that's stored here. And if we wanna double check, why don't we change the default color to red. And then I'm gonna reload this page, go to the bottom and let's add something again. We'll do LM2. And we're going to include box shadow again, but this time we'll leave it with the defaults. And notice now it's picking up that default there that's stored in your base. So think of your base.scss file as your kind of your config file. This is where you import anything. It's where you set your configuration options. And then it makes your actual development file much cleaner and you only need to import it from each file. And then you can do this again for things like uh, splitting up your files. So know how traditionally with CSS to use import, it can be a little intensive and it's not a best practice. It's better to combine them. But when you're using like something like SAS or Compass, it doesn't matter. So you can split it up if you want a header CSS file, a footer CSS file, a typography, that's fine. And then you can import all of those to make things as clean as possible. And then ultimately when they're exported, it'll be exported to one large file anyways. All right, so that's been your introduction to Compass and that's going to conclude our SAS quick tip mini series. If you'd like us to take things even further, let me know and we'll definitely do so. My name's Jeffrey Way and thank you so much for watching. Bye.